Hi, I'm Marina. I'm Michelle. And, and this, this is, is a Flipping Gals, Gals podcast. We like to go to garage and estate sales and look for treasures. We also like to gather people, collectors and resellers alike, and provide them with information about products, many of them vintage, and share information along with other resellers about how to get started and make some extra side money doing what we do. Thanks for joining us today. Today we want to talk about some mistakes that we've made in reselling or really like just learning moments. So mm -hmm. yeah, so we're going to just go back and forth and share a few with you. Yeah, first mistake <laughs> was that we found Beanie Babies online advertised like for $5,000 and we were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Beanie Babies are worth $5,000. So when we went to garage sales and we saw them, we bought a grip load of Beanie Babies. <laughs> We're laughing because obviously there's a learning lesson coming coming on, right? Right. Yeah. So what ended up happening? So I ended up, <laughs> they're selling for a dollar, two dollars on eBay. <laughs> yeah, or 50 cents. <laughs> and we paid like a dollar, two dollars for each one. Um, so Beanie Babies are, are out. Like, I'm just, we're just going to give you some free advice right now. Don't buy <laughs> Beanie Babies ever, ever, <laughs> ever, ever. Yeah. Unless it's like Diana, Princess Diana, special one made, that's worth a lot of money, but like. No, that's not. Yeah, no, but it is. No, the real one is, not the is fake it? one. They made a special purple Princess Diana bear. Not the one, they made a, like, they made one for the public too, it's worthless, but they made one just for the people who attended. That one's worth a lot of thousands of dollars, but that's the only Beanie Baby worth anything. Yeah. And unless I think you're in, you know, you were at the, at that Princess Diana event funeral, you didn't get one. Yeah. Or, yeah. But anyway, next. Uh, next mistake number two, packaging. I have no experience packaging items and I have no clue how the post office would treat the packaging, the packaged goods. It's the post office's fault. So, no. <laughs> So the first couple of items I sold, is what she's saying, um, including a, a plate, uh, like a little saucer plate, and Funko Pops, um, and I did not know how to package them. This is a Funko Pop right here. It's a vinyl doll that's very popular right now. So what I did was I shoved this thing in an envelope <laughs> and shipped it, and. What happened was the buyers were obviously extremely upset because it's all smashed. <laughs> and the saucer plate that I sold was broken into pieces. So definitely do your research on packaging before you ship anything out. Yeah, That's and we're still, it's two. a work in progress, this <laughs> learning curve on packaging. That's not, e it's not easy. You really gotta do your research. Like, yeah. Yeah, so after that we did start doing more research on packaging, but we've still made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. we, um, we've broken mirrors, like expensive vintage bar mirrors have just arrived smashed, useless. That was a more common one too, that was probably like about a month ago. <laughs> yeah, so we, we messed that one up. Yeah. Uh, but some, some we did a good job on. We did a good job on... Um, on one vintage mirror that we packed together and um, we did a good job on a, a clock, clock that had glass. Yeah. So some, some we did good, some we did bad. But here's a learning lesson. The learning lesson is if you've never done it before, even if it seems like something simple like a book, trust me, you can make a mistake on that. Look up the video on YouTube. Spend the time figuring out how to package that thing because it's not worth messing up on packaging because it can ruin your reviews. It can, like, you have to pay a lot out of pocket. And if you're doing what we're doing, which is paying to source things or to buy things to sell, and then it gets ruined, then you have to pay for that. We pay for shipping to get it returned, and it's just really expensive. So yeah, that's definitely, you know, a good lesson number two for a beginner. Okay, number three is when you price items, don't go off of sort of one price that eBay is um, going for. So sometimes when you buy an item and you don't know how to price it, you people usually go to like the sold items and see how much they're worth. Definitely um, don't base the price off of one item, but kind of look through everything 
Um, there's a filter that where you can sort the items by price. You can kind of look at the highest priced item that was sold to the lowest and sort of get like an average. Um, and that is a quick tip because in the past we would price items based on whatever I saw on eBay. Um, so that's lesson number three. Yeah, and so to add to that, the way that I usually like to price items is you go to the sold items. Now that only shows you the past three months on eBay. Um, there are some other websites that show you the whole history. We actually have one that we're going to recommend to you. Do you remember the name of it? I sent it to you earlier today. Pick, click. Can you, do you mind looking it up? Pick, for the click. Pick, click. Um, but this, we haven't really talked about our dog, but this is the dog. Her name is Kiki and she just buried her head in between our arms and she's taking a nap. Um, anyway, that's Kiki. <laughs> yeah, so my recommendation though on the pricing is you look at the historical prices and you know what? You also look at who's selling the items now. And if nobody's selling those items now, only you, guess what? You can choose the highest price and you can even go a little bit over that if you want because the demand is non-existent. You're the one, the only one that has that item. So don't make a mistake of lowballing an item like that, that you're the only one that has because something like that is almost invaluable. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's our, what we have to say about pricing, our so, recommendation on pricing. So the website is called, um, pick click. So if you go to pick click.com, which you, is you P I C C L I C K.com. Correct. Yeah. It will let you see um, the the eBay sale prices historically. So it doesn't stop you at just three months like eBay does. Correct. Okay. Lesson number four is, let me see. What we used to do is we'd go garage selling and we'd buy a lot of things and then we'd spend all weekend taking pictures and then listing all those items. And you know, we'd take pictures on Saturday, all day Saturday. And then all day Sunday, we'd be listing them on eBay Mercari, offer up, and um, we just wanted to build our inventory. You know, building the inventory is fantastic, but we learned like there's things as such as algorithms and whatnot that help when people are searching for your items. So we learned that what works best is that you list a little bit every day and spread out the listing. So if you have 30 items, instead of listing all of them on Sunday, it's best to list five to 10 every day. Mm -hmm. And every new item that you list on all the platforms, it seems like, get recognized right away. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we, we learned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, lesson number five is when you go treasure hunting, always look at the condition of the items carefully. Uh, for example, especially clothing items, sometimes we would get super excited about, you know, certain brands of clothing and then we come home and then notice oh now there's there are stains or there are rips or holes and um that really impact the pricing of the item and it's actually harder to sell an item that even if it's brand name but um, damage so definitely check everything slowly and before you pay for the item yeah um okay another lesson is about how much money to spend when you're outside sourcing or buying things um at first we thought like, you know, I think we're, we spent a hundred dollars and we started bringing in about $250 a week. So we're like, wow, imagine if we spend $200 or even 250, our sales are going to triple. For some reason that didn't happen. <laughs> so what we ended up doing is we had the $250 budget a week to spend and we found ourselves like going to garage and estate sales and forcing ourselves to spend the money. So instead of buying cheap items, we'd buy really expensive items and then they'd sit there for a while. And we were really just running out of money quickly. So that's a lesson that we learned is that we made a rule that we're not gonna spend more than one or $2 an item. And on rare occasion, we could spend more if we think it's gonna sell quickly and we're gonna make some money. So that's, that's a big lesson. Uh, lesson number six is I already forgot that's okay you can think about you can make it the next time. oh yeah lesson number six so when you do the listing um 
not only do you need to be careful when buying an item but when you list an item you also have to make sure all the information is accurate I've made many mistakes where the listing information or description is not really matching um, the item itself and later I have to correct myself after they purchase the item um, and that's always not a good situation so always double check do things slowly but um, surely and uh, making sure everything's accurate yeah um yeah, that's true because that also will lead to a return and a bad rating. So um, you don't want to do that. Or even, not even a return, even you may even tell them, oh, you can keep it at a discount or um, for free and it's still going to be money out of your pocket. So that's a good one. Yeah. That's lesson number seven, right? Six. Eight, number six? Okay. So lesson number seven is take good pictures. And what we mean by good pictures is this is kind of like the goal that we set is, you know, we're not photographers, but the goal that we want to set is this is at the end of the day this is a business this is e-commerce and you want your pictures to look as professional as possible mm -hmm. and thankfully there's so many tools out there that you can now use to to make that happen but we just take pictures using our phone mm -hmm. and you want to make sure the picture's bright so in order to do that we did buy some lighting mm -hmm. and you want to point a lot of light at your at your product mm -hmm. And you also want to make sure that the brightness on your phone is bright as well. Mm -hmm. And we even bought some roll of paper on Amazon mm -hmm. that's special for taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And there, yeah, and you can check out our Instagram page, the Flippin' Gals um, handle on Instagram, and you can see some of some of the more professional looking pictures, which are a Later. little more recent yeah. actually. Yeah, um, is kind of what we're going for. So you do want the item to look professional mm -hmm. and it's not hard and it doesn't take a lot of your time to do that yeah. and if you want to request that we make a video showing you how we take pictures to put on youtube yeah we're more than happy to do that mm -hmm. as well definitely that's my recommendation and it does uh, impact your sales too it does pictures. yes okay lesson number seven is about shipping um so we have obviously multiple um buyers at a time and they, they purchase different items always double check who you who and what item um is who you ship the item to and what is in the item before you put the labels on the packaging um there have been a few occasions where i sort of ship the item to the wrong buyer so there it's one item goes to the wrong buyer the other item goes to the, another wrong buyer which made it really complicated and you definitely don't want to get into that situation. So before you package and um, or seal the box or the envelope, double check the name and um, cross check the phone, your phone and making sure um, the information and address is matching the buyer's name. I have a solution for that. So it may be a little tedious, but it will ensure that never happens, which is as you're packaging your items, grab a Sharpie and on that, on that closed package, just write what it is quickly. Like, oh, orange shirt or, you know, Batman Funko Pop. And then you can print out your labels with all your packages closed and then place them on there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what number was that one? Eight. Eight. No, eight. You're oh, no, eight. eight. Okay. Um, okay. Number eight is don't buy mugs and don't buy <laughs> plush dolls. Yeah, so like I said, Gary V will recommend that you buy plush dolls and mugs. Although I haven't watched the recent Trash Talk, have you? Did yeah, you, you he's still buying Is he mugs. still buying the, the plush yeah. dolls and the mugs? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I no. mean, no, because we've bought so many mugs and we still have them and nobody wants to buy them. Like a couple of, of rare ones will work if it's anything like m m related or Disney related, those work. You can buy those for a dollar, sell them for 15 bucks. Um, something vintage will work. Mm -hmm. We sold one National Park vintage mug for how much? $30. 30 bucks. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just rare mugs will work. And how do you know which ones to find? Well, you can go on eBay or on that click pick um, history, put mugs, and then 
arrange the pricing from the most expensive to the least expensive so you get an idea which ones are worth money but most of them are not so but you do want to start learning which ones are worth money in case you do run into something yeah. like that at a garage sale or an estate sale but definitely no plush doll plush doll <laughs> yeah okay um lesson number nine is about the items that you pick i think a lot of people actually ask me, what did you buy? How do you know what to buy? Um, and I think it wouldn't hurt when you're shopping to do, actually do research um, while you're shopping. Don't ever un underestimate, um, underestimate some certain items. For example, when, we, when I saw a box of vintage newspapers, I was like, oh no, they're... That was the last day of the garage sale and nobody wanted it. Um, so I totally just didn't even bother looking at what's inside. But then Marina um, was actually super interested in that box of newspapers. And so we ended up getting three boxes of newspapers. Um, obviously nobody wanted them. So we offered to pay how much it was ten dollars ten dollars for probably for 50 um newspapers and magazines and at least, at least. Mm -hmm. so surprisingly we actually sold quite a few of them and a lot of them are worth money yeah. yeah i mean i place a lot of value just myself i place a lot of value on historical items that are media related like a newspaper the newspapers tell the truth about what happened in history and they're very important and i always wish and pictures also and i always wish that our items go to um, people who are going to either cherish them and collect them and pass them on or donate to a museum or something because um you know that's all we got left is um that's all we got left is is um newspapers from the past or um, recordings or yeah no. No. Okay, um, lesson number 10 is uh, basically I've learned to plan our trips to um, garage sales. So the day before, definitely have a plan. Um, and when you go to a garage sale or estate sale, usually estate sales, there are so many items and certain places actually price them really high. Um, even though there are cool items sometimes, the prices probably won't work. Um, but there were times when we stayed at one place for like two hours and mm -hmm. um, ended up finding the prices of the items were so high. Yeah. And so we were kind of pushing ourselves to purchase the items even though they were a little more expensive. So definitely plan things out, um, make sure the price is right before you actually commit to going to a place. Yeah, so more on that is um, like if you go to an estate sale, you usually have to get in line one or two hours before it starts. So that's also time wasted. So we learn not to um, spend that much time. So we have to limit our time at an estate sale. And um, also, what was the other thing that I was gonna say? Um, gosh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, and the other thing is, um, because it is expensive usually, um, you know, don't go to an estate sale when prices are full price pricing mm -hmm. or you can leave right away because actually some estate sales do have good prices on the first day. Very few, but some do. Um, but what you can do is go on the last day of the estate sale when prices are slashed at 50% off or something like that. And then you can usually get better deals that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's it for our um, lessons that we've learned and we hope that you have taken some of this or that it has helped some of you. And if you'd like us to expand on any of those topics, please let us know mm -hmm. in the comment section or send us a direct message. Uh, you can visit our website at flippinggals.com and our email is flippinggals at gmail.com if you wanna send us an email. And if you guys have any questions, we're, we're available to answer any of your questions. So, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share.